Okay, so I let it go blended for another couple minutes. So this is what it looks like. It's a little bit more finer on the side. As you can see, the little, what we call the bay heat, those are a little bit more finer. So that's kind of the texture that you're wanting for, the consistency that you're wanting to go for. Now, this is what is gonna be in that frozen container that I told you about, the Buenos. This is what's in there. So it's raw chili. It's already done, this part's already done for you if you go to the freezer section. So it saves you on some time. Um, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna let it sit here, kind of cool off a little bit. I'm gonna take the top of the lid off here, this little piece off so that some of the steam can come out. The meat's not quite soft yet. I just checked a piece. It's So we need to get that a little bit more soft. So we're still gonna cook it a little bit more, uh, probably for about another five, 10 minutes and see how, if the meat's really soft. If it is, then I'll show you how to put it together. Okay, so we've had the meat cooking for about 20, 30 minutes, low and slow. Um, it's soft right now. As you can see, all of the juice, the moisture has uh, reduced out of it. So this is too dry right now the way it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, you can either add shortening to it, but since we're doing this in New Mexico way, we're gonna use lard. Either one, if you're health conscious, use a shortening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about this much, which is probably about mm, a third, fourth, a third, I guess. Probably a fourth, let me see. About a fourth, I had to look at my measuring cups. It's about a fourth cup. Okay, now this is gonna depend on how much fat you have in your pork. Like I said, I like pork loin. Pork loin doesn't have a lot of fat. It doesn't render a lot of fat. But if you buy the um, one that's on sale, and you have a lot more fat, that's fine. And that just means you don't have to add either any of the lard or the shortening or not that much. And the reason we're doing this, I'm gonna, I've been clicking it on medium. So I'm gonna go up a little bit higher on my heat. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm melting down the shortening is because we're gonna add flour to this. The flour is what's going to thicken and finish cooking out the red chili. Now, before I do this, okay, let me just tell you something. You can also use this for your enchilada sauce. So this is raw. You can't just put this over your enchiladas because it's not cooked, you need to cook it. Same thing, you would use that amount of lard or vegetable a third instead of the meat here let's just pretend the meat's not here you would melt down your shortening or your lard and add the flour add this to it cook it plain enchilada sauce then you can go ahead and add it to your enchilada so since we're making uh, red chili with meat we're doing it this way but it, you can use it for the enchilada sauce as well you would just you, again, melt down the lard or the shortening with your flour to be able to thicken it up and finish cooking it. So what I have here is probably about a third of the flour. Maybe a little bit more than that. And again, I eyeball a lot of this stuff. So it's probably a, maybe a little bit more than a third cup. And I just sprinkle it on top. And I'm gonna cook it for a couple of minutes, cook the flour down for a couple of minutes over the meat. Make sure you keep stirring it because if you don't stir it, there'll be pieces or pockets of flour that won't cook. And you will definitely taste the raw flour in the red chili if you don't cook it down for a couple of minutes. So you want to cook it down a couple of minutes to get the raw flour taste off. And I have my grandbabies here, of course. They're taking a bath. Did you dry yourself? Yeah. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. Can we take some clothes out? Yep. <laughs> the joys of babysitting, I tell you. But been doing this for a very long time. Had three kids of my own. I learned how to cook, take them a bath, all at the same time. Okay, so we've been cooking this down, as you can see here. So we have the flour cooked down, so that flour taste comes off. Now we're ready to add this to it. Now 
Now you want to add, when if you do the cheater way, the little container, it's one container of red chili to one container of water is what you would mix together to cook it down. Same concept here. So we had about, uh, this is probably about five cups of red chili, so we're going to add about five cups of water. I'm going to use them to start off with a little bit less because I like mine a little bit thick and then just kind of work with it as I go. And because remember we added salt to the red chili when we were blending it, we don't really need to add any now. Once it starts to boil, you can do a taste test and if you feel you need more flour, I mean I'm sorry, more salt, then you just add it at that point when you're finishing it out. So this is on high because we want this to boil. And what the flour does is it just thickens your red chili sauce. You have to cook the raw red chili. If you don't, you will get really sick. It'll give you a really bad stomach ache. It doesn't taste very good raw. So the meat and the juices of the meat is what's gonna give your red chili your flavor. I can see how it's looking. So we're looking for this, this kind of consistency. It's thick. It's going to get a little bit thicker as it starts to boil. So the flour will make it a little bit more thick. So all I'm doing is just making sure that all the bottom, all the good pieces, the baked pieces that were on the bottom of the pan are picked up. Because that also gives it flavor. The scrapings from the bottom of the pan, the cooked scrapings, those are the best part. As you can see here, I still have a little bit of water, which was the five cups, and I only put about four because I wanted to see where I was at with it. I'm just going to add a little bit. Because as the flour starts to boil, this will start to thicken, so then I'll keep adding it. I don't want to add all five cups all at once because it might be too watery. And once it's watery, there's no way to thicken up it unless you put more flour, which you don't want to do that because it does taste floury. The only way you can kind of salvage it is if you put uh, cornstarch in it. <clears throat> but if you put too much water, you're kind of losing out, blending down, watering down the flavors of the red chili, and you want this to be really tastes like red chili. So that's why I start off with the four cups and kind of go from there. Let this boil down. I think I'm good with it as far as it, the thickness. Been doing it for a long time, so kind of know what I'm looking for. Quick taste test. Yummy. Does need a little bit more salt. Just enough garlic in it. You can barely taste the garlic. You don't want to put too much garlic in it, even though if you're Italian, like my husband's Italian, they use a lot of garlic and they like the garlic flavor. Doesn't work too much with the red chili. Because it will taste like garlic and not red chili. So there's just enough in here. So I'm going to let this, it's already come to a boil, so what I'm going to do is put it on low and let this finish cooking for about another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and your red chili is done. And that is your New Mexico style red chili.